Um, so for today's session, we will talk about uh, uh, firstly a brief introduction of uh, Paige and myself, and then I will take like uh, one or two minutes to uh, introduce uh, my company. Um, after that, uh, I will explain um, how Profiner Rest Plus is in China, and then uh, we will follow by some features and uh, functions um, in. Um, of the product. Uh, if we have enough time, uh, we will do a live demo. Uh, if not, maybe we'll skip this uh, live demo part. Uh, and then lastly, uh, Paige will share her experience using Red Plus with uh, her teacher remote in China. Uh, lastly, um, we are open for any questions uh, you, you may have. So um, yeah, firstly, um, Paige, uh, yeah, please give an uh, introduction of yourself. Sure. So my name is Paige, um, Paige Hebert. Some of you guys might know me. I taught at GoGo Kid. Um, I did a variety of work there, but since um, last year, I've been doing mostly private teaching. Um, right now, I only teach my private students, and most of my students right now are based in um, China mainland. I do have some students based in Japan, but they are the primary base. So when I was looking for materials to make everything more uh, professional after maternity leave, I remembered RAS Kids. And I'm here because I'm a RAS enthusiast. I really like the product and I've used it for years. So I used it before online teaching. Since um, 2018, I was using it in brick and mortar public schools. So for me, um, this product isn't new, but recommending it to teachers in this way is new. So I'm happy to be partnering with. Uh, Gilbert and sharing it with you today. Thank you for being here. Thanks, Paige. Um, yeah, for myself, um, Gilbert Lee, um, and right now I'm the uh, manager for Adulinks Business in mainland China. Um, before this, I used to work in the information technology industry. Um, you, you, you may say that it's uh, uh, very far from the education industry. Um, I worked for IBM and another software company headquartered in the US for like more than 10 years. Um, two years ago, um, I got this opportunity. A friend asked me whether I'm interested in working, uh, promoting the red product in Milan, China. Um, you know, back then I, I have two boys. Uh, they used uh, Res Plus um, at their schools. And uh, I know Res, uh, Res Plus is a very, very good product. And I want uh, um, as many students as possible in China to use this platform and read the level uh, books. So that's why I uh, decided to join this company. And uh, I have been working for around two years and. Uh, I feel quite happy about my decision. Um, yeah, so that, that's, um, that's all about me. Uh, thank you. So um, let me introduce uh, Agilink, uh, my company. So our company um, is uh, headquartered in Hong Kong. Um, our team has uh, 20 plus years of experience in bringing Western um, educational pedagogy and resources to students in Asia and in China. Um, my focus is mainland China, but uh, uh, we also worked here for a little minute. Pick up. Yeah. Um, so basically, the way it was explained to me that um, they're the distributor. So Learning A to Z is a large international company. Um, and EduLink is the main distributor in China. So when you log on to the Reading A to Z site, you see the one facing us for North America, like US and Canada, but they really are internationally distributed, um, not just through um, Cambria, which I think is the parent company based in North America, but they partner with distributors. So the distributor is EduLink. Um, and EduLink, they also have like promotions they do on WeChat. They have like a presence on Chinese social media. They really are established. They've been di distributing the product for years. So this isn't something that they're brand new launching. 
in the in the market. This is something that's been around for years. I have parents that have purchased the books and they've used it for years. Hi. Can I hear you now? Yeah, I can. I was just explaining okay. that EduLink is the distributor. Um, okay. Maybe, Thank you. Will it, will it work better for you if you keep your camera off and just focus on the slides? What do you think? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, I shut off my camera now and uh, hope it uh, helps. Okay, great. Okay, so should I continue? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so uh, to be sure, uh, so we are the uh, exclusive partner of many to this subscription business in China. Um, and I already explained why uh, I'm, I'm here. So next, um, as we are talking about the Red Plus, uh, the flagship product of this company, um, I wanna share with you some numbers. Um, so this is the Neville Readers um, um, a product, and uh, we have for uh, 29 levels, and uh, there are 2,600 plus uh, books uh, in those uh, 29 levels. And uh, besides those uh, books, uh, it, the product also offers uh, 50 plus sorry, 50,000 plus teachers resources. So you can use it for classroom teaching and many other things. Um, and um, the product is um, developed uh, and promoted uh, originally in the US. Now it has been used in more than 180 countries worldwide. And in the US, um, our US team said that there are more than 50% schools uh, using REST. Uh, Res, Res Plus. And um, globally, um, this is the most widely adopted uh, Neville reading program globally. Um, here, yeah, I just want to share with you some of the industry awards Res Plus received in the past years. Um, the, the product received lots of awards. Um, probably you are more familiar than me uh, about those awards because all of those are from the US. Um, yeah, so um, we, we don't have time to explain each of those awards. Uh, if you want to get more details, um, let me know, or you can go to this website to check the details. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, as we are talking about it, Red Plus in China, um, I just want to share with you um, some basic information. Um, you know, in China, um, we have uh, uh, lots of international schools uh, using this product. Uh, we, we, we did an analysis um, for the top 100 international schools in China, 95% of them are our customers. Um, I'm not sure what's the percentage for scores beyond the top 100, but uh, this, I'm sure the percentage is very high as well. So um, the logos here are the best uh, international scores in China. Uh, you may or may not be familiar with those scores, but uh, um, I'm just saying that uh, those are the best. And uh, you know, um, one reason those schools started using breads um, is it, it, because of word of mouth. Um, in China, we actually didn't do any marketing. Um, and um, most of the, those schools, they heard about the um, reputation of Red Plus in the US and they were looking for a platform like this. And then after some research, they decided to uh, purchase our products. Okay, so um, that's a quick brief of the company and the, uh, the product. Now let's move to the uh, product features and the function part. Um, so firstly, and this product provides all necessary resources and tools 
for an English reading course. So um, it supports your classroom instruction. Uh, when we say classroom instruction, it can be uh, offline, it can also be online. And uh, as this is an online platform, it's a perfect uh, uh, product program for online remote teaching, okay? And uh, of course, um, it can support uh, the independent practice uh, out outside of the classroom. And it provides assessment tools for teachers to use. And it also provides robust reporting function. Um, later on, I will explain in more details on those four areas. Uh, regarding the uh, classroom instruction, um, we provide um, all kinds of uh, necessary resources. Um, the first type, of course, is the Neville the books. And the feel for the majority of the Neville the books, uh, each come with um, guided reading lesson plan. Okay, so, so for a teacher, he, uh, his or her job is just to pick which book you wanna go. And then you can read the lesson plan. The lesson plan is very detailed and it uh, talks about how to plan for the um, instruction, what would be the strategy, what would be the key vocabulary, um, how to lead the students before reading, during reading, after reading, uh, and etc. And also um, those books come with uh, discussion cards. Um, so you can print out and hand out students to students and they can read the books with questions in their mind. And then later on, they can have um, classroom discussion. And then uh, the books come with the comprehension quizzes, right? You know, this is a very necessary and a basic uh, um, resource. And uh, also uh, the system provides uh, many uh, worksheets and uh, activities. Uh, that can be used to teach uh, grammar, uh, comprehension skills, uh, phonics, and etc. cetera. Um, and uh, besides all those, there are some other additional resources. So um, besides that, um, the system also provides other uh, resources uh, critical for foundation uh, skills. Uh, such as uh, alphabet, phonics, high frequency word books, uh, shared reading, closed reading, project based learning packs, uh, fluency um, uh, enhancement materials, and the content error reading. Um, so, all those can be a very helpful uh, supplement to the core Nevada reading books. Okay, um, so next, uh, let's see how students can use the product for independent practice. Okay, um, this product um, for all students, they can use, they can access the system anywhere as long as they have internet access. Um, they can be in school, in, uh, 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 in, after school, they can be in China, in Japan, in the US, anywhere. Um, and for each level the reader, uh, they can listen to the origin, authentic American audio, uh, or they can read by themselves. And uh, also they can uh, read aloud by themselves and uh, record their reading and send back to teachers for review. Okay. Um, this is very uh, convenient. Um, this page shows the uh, home page of the reading um, uh, reading library. Um, the app, uh, sorry, uh, students can access the system through two ways. One is they can visit a website. The 
and the URL is www.case-z.com and using the credentials to log into the system. Or they can download an app called case-z. Okay, so this app is available in China's App Store, so everybody can download onto the mobile devices. Um, so uh, no matter it's on mobile app or on the uh, web browser, and this is what the students see after successfully logging in. Okay, um, it provides the uh, um, a reading room access, my assignments, uh, never up and flight check. Um, yeah, later on when we have um, more time, we can explain in more details um, the each of those uh, errors. Um, but here I will just briefly uh, talk about the interface. Um, here, um, Paige, um, yeah. do you want to add something? For yeah, I've been using part? this and my, um, my students are all really happy about it because they get more than just my 25 minute classes that I schedule with them. So by using the RAS Plus app, I can provide that flipped classroom experience without having to create everything myself. So what I do is I send the books in advance before a lesson, and that shows up in my assignment. It's really obvious to them. They can click listen, and they can just listen to the book. They can do a quiz. I usually don't send the quizzes because the quizzes can be a bit difficult for ESL students to begin with. I might assign the quiz later, but this is wonderful because our students are used to kind of having an app to log into and have some practice. And as an independent teacher, that was a big loss that I didn't have that for my students. So I was thinking about resources and I remembered using this in my brick and mortar class. I, when I was in person, I would have the students on the laptops working on this and I would work in reading groups. Now my students do this before class. Um, we have class together, of course, outside of the app. And then after class, I also send them messages using the messaging system. I can send them audio. So it's directly to the student, doesn't get like bogged down in email and chat and they can hear audio, it's all stored there. And I can also send them stars, which they also can get a nice little reward that way as well. Um, and they can build something in the star zone. They can build a rocket ship, a robot. Um, it's not it's not as wide as the apps as the students might have used at VIP Kid or GoGo Kid, but all of the important features and functions are there. Like you have the messaging system, you have a reward, you have a way to give more to the student. And in their free time, they can also read more books and they have some other things in there for them. So thank you, Gilbert. Thanks, Paige. Thank you for helping this okay. work for my students. I really appreciate it. Glad to hear. Um, yeah, so um, for the student portals, uh, actually this system provides two types of portals. Uh, one is on the left, another is on the right. And uh, usually the left side is for uh, younger kids and for older kids, uh, the intermediate portal maybe is a, a better choice. So the teacher can configure uh, which portal you want your students to use um, uh, using a management tool, okay? And uh, here, uh, this page shows um, uh, what kind of ebook annotation tools and features um, the product provides. Um, as you can see here, um, when a student reads a book, uh, the student can um, add notes, uh, highlight some text, and uh, even write some journals and some other stuff. And those will be uh, quite helpful um, to, to the students. And uh, next, uh, let's um, talk about the assessment. Um, as we all know, it's important to uh, do this part uh, to understand uh, uh, how our, pro uh, our students uh, progression. Um, the system provides uh, uh, different types of assessments. Uh, one basic one is the, the comprehension quiz. 
at the end of each Nevada uh, readers. Um, so after reading, the student can uh, do those quizzes and, uh, and see um, whether, uh, how, how could he understand the content and uh, how could is his uh, comprehension skills, okay? Um, another type is um, uh, what we call the benchmark books and the passages. Uh, so this is um, um, more for the teachers. Um, so from time to time, like uh, once a month or depending on another uh, frequency you prefer, you can assign benchmark books to your students. So they can receive the assignment from their side and uh, do the um, test. After finishing the test, um, you will be able to see the results um, from the management portal. And, um, and based on um, the test uh, result, um, you can move up your students to the next level, or you can decide maybe um, you should uh, add uh, additional instruction in one particular domain. I think this is um, a really invaluable tool. Um, if, if, is it okay if I explain it a little bit, Gilbert? Yes, yeah, sure, please. So in, I don't know how many of you have been traditional brick and mortar teachers. Um, this isn't done automatically. This is kind of like what a specialist does with a one student at a time. You have your student, you read, and you have to like, while they're reading, do it with paper and pencil. With the system, it takes the student's recording that they do. And later you can listen to it and do the scoring so you can assign it. They don't have to do it right away. So you don't have to take time in class to do the assessment. Now, you probably don't wanna do that every class or every week, but once a month, you can provide a pretty comprehensive scorecard. And my discerning parents, my choosy moms, uh, let me say, they really, really like that, that I do an in-depth assessment about the students' errors and how they're making improvements. So they really appreciate me taking the time and it helps provide value to the clients. Thank you so much, Gilbert. Yes, that's great. Thanks, Paige. Okay, um, yeah, um, now let's move to the uh, reporting part. Um, so this system really provides very robust reporting function. Um, it's a digital, and uh, it's uh, automatic, so it's very convenient. And usually it can, the, the report can be at a school level, at a classroom level, or at an individual student level. So you can use um, based on your individual needs. And it's very flexible. Um, the reports um, can be on um, different, um, and dimensions. So uh, it can run a report on the uh, comprehension skills or on the common core standards, or it can be a report on students' activities. Uh, yeah, what I heard from some uh, schools in China is that those um, sport, uh, reports are very helpful. So for example, for the uh, student activity report. Um, you only when a teacher uh, make assignment to a student, the teacher actually um, didn't know what happened after um, after school, right? You you couldn't check how much is time a student spends on that assignment. But with this um, Red Plus uh, reporting function, you can see. Um, how many times a student log into the system, um, how many times uh, he or she spent on reading, listening, recording, doing quizzes, and which books or which tests, which assessment this student has finished, uh, and such. So uh, this is very, uh, very convenient. And then, um, um, Paige, uh, do you also want to add your ethics yeah. here? 
So some of these reports are going to be um, more helpful than others for teaching independently. Common Core Standards Report probably is not going to be the most applicable, but it is helpful to have it as a reference if you have used those. So the Comprehension Skill Reports are helpful. The main thing I have found to be helpful is just the Activity Report. Just a quick glance at who's logged into the app. What did they do while they were in the app? Just being able to see that real quick instead of like asking and then trusting if they logged in. Um, this is great because if I assign another website where I don't have this portal, I don't really know what the student did. Um, so this way, if I say, okay, can you please just spend some time during the national holiday week listening to some books of your choice, I can then log in and check and I'll be able to see who actually did it. Now, I'm trying that. I don't want to assign a lot. I just want them to, to listen and enjoy. I'm not trying to add more work on their holiday. I promise. I want them <laughs> to enjoy. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Gilbert. That's great. Thanks. Um, yeah, besides that, uh, the system also provides uh, some other management tools to save teachers time and uh, 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 help implement the blended learning model. Um, for this part, actually, I didn't use it myself. Uh, so please, uh, uh, could you also please help um, share your Absolutely. experience here? This is the main reason why for me, even if I had the books, it's worth it to have the organization system in place because everything on the Learning A to Z website is organized, so I can't mess it up in my files. <laughs> um, I'm kind of a messy person, so you can search by topic. So for example, I had a trial class with a student. Mom told me he likes space. I typed in space, shared my screen, showed the parent all the books. We picked a book for their next class, and it was easy. I was able to just do it right there with the client with me. Um, it's really easy also to see the activities, and if you want to pick a standard to work on, if you're working from standards, you can search by standard. Um, it's one, one thing to know is learning A to Z does offer other languages. So just make sure you do check English because I have on accident opened a Polish book once, but that's okay. Hmm. I just went back and I opened the English book, no big deal. Um, I really appreciate how everything is organized and also you can create folders on the website. So what I do is I have one folder for each student. And then in that student's folder, I put a folder for the week's worth of classes. I put that book in that week folder. So it's really, really easy. Um, I can also then just click sign, send, and it goes right to the RAS app. It's like a couple clicks. I log in, I send it, I put it in the folder, and then I don't have to really do anything until I log in and teach the class. This has cut down my prep time and planning time so much. And when I'm tired at five in the morning, I pull up the lesson plan. I use that lesson plan during the lesson, have the book up, and everything goes much more smoothly than if I was making everything on my own. I can't stress to you how much time this has saved me, and I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank thanks. you. Yeah, thanks, Paige. Okay, um, yeah, so we um, covered the um, key features and functions of uh, REST Plus. Uh, here, I want to explain to you the differences between uh, several products from Learning HD. Um, this is um, sometimes quite confusing for yeah. uh, our teachers. And I um, uh, received many questions from our teachers in China. So I think it might make sense to explain a little bit here. Um, so the first part is called the uh, reading A to Z. Um, so this is um, um, the core of uh, the Neville Reader uh, system um, from Nanyin to Z, okay? And uh, it, it is a teacher-centric product. It offers uh, 3,500 plus Neville readers and 50,000 teachers' resources, okay? So teachers can use all those resources for classroom teaching, uh, but 
it offers no access to student. So student cannot do any after school independent practices. Okay. And the other product is called Res Kids. Probably um, you may have more about Res Kids um, than Res Pass. Um, Res Kids is a student centric product. It offers 800 plus level readers to students, but it offers no teacher's resources. So basically this is an independent product um, that are used to assign independent practice assignments to your student. And if you don't need um, um, other like um, uh, teaching resources and using the 800 level readers is enough. Uh, so this is a product. Um, the one we are talking about today is uh, Red Plus. Um, Red Plus is a combination of reading it Z and the uh, Red Case. So, you know, it, uh, um, it is for teachers and also it's for students. Uh, one big difference between um, um, the resources provided by Red Plus and the Red Kids for students is that uh, with Red Kids, um, students can only access to 800 level readers. But with Red Plus, students can access 2,600 plus level readers. And on top of the, this is on top of all the teachers' resources. Okay. Um, and uh, there's another product called ELL Edition. So this is actually not an independent product. It is an add-on module of Red Plus. Okay. Um, it, it offers additional resources to support non-English speakers. Okay. Um, so um, many of our of our customers in China, and they bought an ELL edition on top of Red Plus. So it's, um, it depends on each uh, um, teacher's situation. Okay. Um, so um, we, um, you only will do a product um, demo here, um, but uh, um, let, let's um, move. Um, to the next slide first, and later on, um, after the Q&A, if we ha still have time, we can do a live demo, okay? Yeah. So, um, yeah, this this slide, um, Paige, can you please explain? Here? Yeah, I sent this in the email as well. So I do earn a commission if you guys do purchase and use my information, but the main thing about the address is you do have to fill it out because if you fill it out this way, then you get connected to Gilbert and his colleagues so they can provide support for you if you're teaching Chinese students. So if you need help getting the app to work, um, you'll have a more direct connection and they'll know that you're using it. So you can use their office address, that's totally fine. Um, you can put any phone number you want, your personal cell, whatever number, and um, your email. Um, the main thing is just um, to, for me to earn a commission, just being straight up, I need to have your email address and I need you to fill out the address with a China address, just so we're connected in that way. So it shows up in the system that you're a teacher, you want to be connected to the office, and you also want to get support um, from Gilbert and I. So what I can do on my end is I can just help share like how I use Res. Um, I'm not a RAS employee. I'm just a, a RAS enthusiast. Gilbert and his colleagues, they're the ones where if you have an issue with the app not working or you have questions about the product specifically, um, his team can help you guys out. And there's a lot of support. There's a lot of recorded webinars and they're wanting to help teachers build global classrooms. Um, so if you guys have ideas and suggestions, um, they would love to hear from you and be connected. Yeah, for sure. Else? And uh, yeah, and then um, um, if your parents, your students need um, um, assistance in, in Mandarin, uh, we, we can also do that. 
and uh, we also speak right. English. Um, and uh, whenever uh, you have any um, uh, technical questions or any issue with the app, the website, um, please just let us know. Um, if you need any training on how to use the product um, as a teacher, uh, we, we can we can arrange any training um, um, as, as you like. And if you want us to um, um, explain to your parents, your students, uh, uh, what's the best way to use the system, uh, we can also help. Just let us know. Thank you. That's awesome. Because that's one thing that, as an independent teacher, you don't always have that support to explain how to use materials. So having that support from your office is really valuable. Thank you, Gilbert. No problem. Yeah, that's our job. Okay. Um, yeah, so uh, we have uh, spent like uh, 40 minutes uh, explaining the portal and uh, our positioning. Um, how about we go to this uh, Q&A session now? So the floor is yours, guys. Whatever questions you have. Yeah. Is somebody here. talking? <laughs> no one's talking yet. Did we do such a good job? You don't have questions, or Chris? I see your hand I've, raised. Go ahead. I just wondered what what resources are available in the ELL package. Mm. I know you have a slide mm. about that, Gilbert. So we have the ELL edition okay. appendices, right? Yes, that's a very good question. Um, let me switch to here. Okay, I have several slides uh, explaining the ELL edition. Um, so uh, overall, this is for non-English speakers. Um, you know, for when we teach uh, English reading and English um, in general, uh, Chinese students need some additional assistance in vocabulary, grammar, and some other areas. Um, so that's uh, why we have this um, uh, additional module. So this is, um, 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 on, on this slide, you will see what kind of resources are included in this year at all module. Uh, we have the Never the Reader Packs. We have Content Picture Packs. Uh, vocabulary book series, vocabulary power packs, uh, and such. Um, those are specifically developed uh, for non-English speakers. Okay, so uh, seriously, they will be um, more effective um, for our Chinese students. Um, yes, yeah, so to just um, just a piece of information. Um, as Paige uh, mentioned at the very beginning, um, you can apply for a two-week free trial uh, if you like, and um, um, you can access Redfast, you can access ELL to see um, what's in there. Um, and you will get a much better un understanding of all those resources. I didn't think I could get the ELL um, for a two-week trial. It might make you pick, but then you do get like day passes. Um, if you're having trouble with doing your trial, just send me a message because I have done trials a few times right. to just see what's there. Mm -hmm. But then once you see what's there, you realize what's there and you can't live without it. So just right. know once you start a trial, it gets serious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Um... If you want to uh, try the ELL as well, um, please uh, uh, reach out to Paige or myself um, because usually when you apply for the free trial online, um, it works very well for REST Plus and some other products. But uh, ELL is an add-on module. Um, it, right. 
if you apply by yourself, you only you want to get it. So, um, so apply through us. We will edit this for you. Okay. I just got the question from Lori in the chat. So students don't need their own subscription. That's correct. So um, Gilbert, right? So the teacher license covers one teacher and 36 students, if I'm remembering correctly. So they yeah, don't have to exactly. pay for anything, just the teacher pays. And then you distribute mm -hmm. your student accounts. Yeah, you, um, you pay for one license and you can use it with uh, up to 36 students. <laughs> And uh, yeah, you manage the students' accounts uh, by ourselves. Of course, if you need help, we can help you. Um, and uh, uh, when you have uh, students uh, um, leave the classroom, uh, you can remove that student and add another new student into your classroom. As long as you don't have uh, more than 36 at, at the same time. Are there any other questions? ELL edition is a, a big, big component. And I know that um, right now it's, it can be hard to like upgrade your materials. Um, so do, do, a, do a free trial. Um, and then once you get your students and you get some class packages sold, then you can forward it. Because I don't want anyone <clears throat> to go into debt just buying materials, but I do, want to suggest this product because I have to tell you guys, I have spent way more money on other products than I've ever spent on right. RAS just to come back to RAS and realize that everything I needed was here. I see Emily has a question in the comments. Um, she says, mm -hmm. am I using this? So um, for me, so I'll just explain technically how I use it. So there's the pre-class where before we have class, I send the book to the student in the app. I also do send an email to the parent just to make sure um, everything works, but I could just send the book in the app. They listen to the book in the app. During class, I pull up the book um, using this, the uh, viewer on the website. And I like that one because the tools are all built in. I can highlight and use some tools without having to wrap my brain around whatever video platforming I'm using. I've used a variety of platform ones. I've used Vuv, I've used Zoomu, I've used Zoom. Um, but I like to just use the tools on the website. Um, they are not really logging into the portal during class unless I'm trying to explain to them how to use the RAS app. They use the RAS app primarily before class and after class because after class, I also send them feedback and stars. So I send them a nice little peppy video recording saying, David, today you did a really good job in class. Mm -hmm. You can practice this word, engine. And like I do the pronunciation that I want them to work on in audio real quick, send them the stars. And then they go in after class. So for me, they're not really logging into the app during class. Um, we use the materials, of course, but the app is primarily out of class. Um, and Teresa asked about how long. So a book is not one day. Um, when you look at the lesson plans and you download it, you'll see it's very lengthy. So you really kind of spend a day previewing it and talking about like, the, the content vocabulary and such before you even read, especially for an ELS, ELL student, you build the background, you kind of do the vocabulary. And then I'll spend another day reading and doing comprehension. So usually for me, I'll do a book between two to three lessons. So if a student only sees me once a week, I mean, I'll, I'll try to do most of the book and then we'll do the comprehension stuff the next week but it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't work out really well for once a week because the books are so much so i usually will do it um two to three lessons one day will be preview and vocabulary the other day will be like we'll fully read the book and then depending on how much time we'll do comprehension and whatever other strategies are embedded in the lesson and then if we have extra time there's some project ideas and stuff. So I really like doing project style classes with my students. It's really flexible. Um, the, the resources are there so that you as a teacher don't have to spend time just looking for materials. Um, you can kind of take what's there and then be confident in creating lessons. So, oh, you're how they're viewing me. So I just screen share. So 
Um, I'll just open the book on my screen, screen share, and I don't use Claxton anymore. So I don't upload this too. You can download the books and then upload, but I just screen share. Yeah. I yeah. don't like to spend a lot of time You're downloading and uploading files. I just screen share. Yeah. So you, you can use a, a platform like Zoom or like Tencent Meeting, right, to run the online classes. Okay, great, you've answered your question. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, um, personally, I thought, um, and Teresa asked another question. Uh, it's uh, how easy is this for students to access uh, VPN needed or not? Um, yeah, that's an important question. Um, so um, in China, firstly, everybody can download the app. Everybody can access the website. And uh, in most part of um, China, uh, you don't need a, a VPN. The speed is uh, uh, quite good. So for example, for myself, I'm in Shenzhen. Um, as you may know, it's uh, uh, in South China. Um, I use uh, this system quite a lot um, for my key and for demoing with uh, some uh, teachers the speed is uh, quite good. Um, in some other part of China, sometimes the speed uh, might be an issue. Um, as you know, uh, you, during, especially during the peak hours, uh, the speed is uh, uh, slow. Um, in, in that case, uh, we can recommend uh, students to use an accelerator from um, Tencent, which is a big company in China. And uh, that accelerator is a legal product. So there's no any issue there. Um, for VPN, if a student, I, I don't know, uh, if they want, they can try, uh, but uh, uh, in most cases, uh, maybe not. So we had a little chat going on about more resources for students. You're right, Chris. I forget. There's so much stuff in Rans. I forget. Yeah. They do have a foundational phonics series. They do. Um, they were, I, I know that with Raz ELL, there's more grammar stuff. Um, but there, I would say that grammar instruction isn't really present in the lessons written for native speakers, but it is present in the Raz ELL. Phonics is present in all um, all of RAS, because phonics is foundational for reading, even if you're a native speaker. You're right. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else that we need questions about? Yeah, Teresa? I saw your hand briefly. Go ahead. Um, so, because you're marketing this as re a reading class, it's probably better than marking it as a, an English class, right? So it's hard because the blind between reading and English instruction can be kind of blurry. Um, really, when you think about what a session on a platform was, is they did the reading, writing, listening, and speaking. That's traditional ESL. ESL isn't really a content. ESL is just a strategy to make sure that your, your learner can learn English. So when you have a RAS lesson, as long as you make sure that they're doing like reading, listening and speaking, we don't do really a lot of writing in the online content. It's an ESL lesson. So I do market this as a more reading intensive one because we do books, but when they move from just speaking and listening to reading, I find that even in the traditional platform classes, I would have to spend more time in the reading anyway, like when they were reading passages, like you know those readers, they would do and they'd read it over and over again. When you get to like level two or three, um, you'd have to kind of teach some reading strategies there too. So it's hard. I, I'm licensed to ESL and reading. And so the line is blurry between the two. So if you if you if you feel that you need to focus on certain things for your client to make it an English class versus a reading class, do that. And not everything in the lesson plans, I do. I, 
I can't do everything in the RAS lesson plans. I really just pick and choose um, what's what activities are best suitable for my students. Does that make sense, Teresa? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So I, I try to market it as even better than a regular English class, <laughs> if, if that helps. That's a very good question. Yeah. Daily language practice per grade. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's some like warm up ones. Yeah, there's a lot well, it's, in there. This is for, yeah, I know you can't see it, but it's this one shows grade one and it goes up through grade five on everything you could do week to week. Oh, but, so like like grammar practice in there with daily language, like the bell warm up things? Oh, um, well, it's interjections, declarative sentences. That's for grade one. And then it goes up to grade five. I didn't even, I haven't seen this stuff yet. Um, grade five has suffixes, figurative language, idioms. Good stuff. So that's, with all that combined, I was just wondering how different it is from ELL. Teresa asked a good question. Is it useful for grades one to five only? I know there are some Z plus levels. Um, so what grades do you think usually are, like is, is RAS, is it just for grades one to five in your experience, Gilbert? Or do um, upper level grades use it as well? Um, so there's a difference in the US and in China. Um, um, as, as far as I know in the US, so this system is for a pre-key to grade five. Um, <clears throat> and in China, uh, we also has, have have um, um, middle schools using this product, um, because the English language level um, of Chinese student even is uh, uh, behind that of in the U.S. I have also used this in middle and high schools. My first ever teaching job, I was teaching fifteen to twenty-two year old students. I was twenty-three at the time, <laughs> and they were also newcomers <clears throat> to English. And then some of them did, were not literate in their first language. So I, ha I, I was teaching okay. students with limited interrupted formal education. So we really had to use a lot of primary uh, material. So it's interesting. It, they, they say K to five, but it's as long the level is the level. Like a grade band is not necessarily like mean if you're older than a, a grade five student, right? Yeah, you can ask me. Questions. I know somewhere on there it has the levels compared to other systems somewhere, like DRA and Lexile yeah. levels. I have a, if you went to my workshop, I have a chart I can pull up and share. Um, yeah, it compares it to Lexile levels. And Lori says, um, the lesson plan, they have a written up one. So when you pull up the level reader, um, would it be okay if I shared my screen over it? That way I can like show what I'm talking about versus just uh, yeah, saying it. Sure. What do you think? Okay. Um, so I will yeah, log into my teacher account and I'll just show you. I'll pull up for a student. One second. Um, make sure I log in right. Okay. Logging in right now. Not sure why. Number logging in. There we go. There it is. Okay. Now I can do it. Sorry, I was logging into the wrong thing. I'll show my portion of my screen. So you'll see that I am logged in. I have my account here in the corner. I will just go into my filing cabinet and I'll pull up one I did this morning. We did cars. So um, what I do is I pull up the guided reading lesson, I download it. And so I have my objectives. And so we have to make sure as teachers, we accomplish the objectives. I need to make sure he understands the text. I need to know he can do the author's purpose. But if I have to pick and choose objectives, I might chop this one off and just do prior knowledge, 
the phonics, nouns, and high frequency words. So it's up to you as the teacher what objectives you want to accomplish. And then in here, there's plans to accomplish all the objectives. So when I say I pick and choose, um, I don't do all the activities listed here. I choose the objectives I want to accomplish up here. And then I make sure that I do activities that will allow my student to accomplish those objectives because I don't have time to do all of that because <laughs> there's so much. But because there's so much, I don't have to spend a lot of time thinking and remaking the wheel and spending a lot of my time coming with, with ideas. Traditionally, what you have in a textbook, the textbook has the, the stuff, it has the objectives and it says, okay, great, you're good. But here you have the lesson plan spelled out. So it'll tell you how to do the book walk. It'll tell you how to do the reading strategy, which is really helpful when you have a lot of classes. And it's also really helpful at five in the morning when you're tired, right? <laughs> So it's very helpful. I'll stop sharing my screen. <laughs> Hope that answers your question, Lori. Good. I know we're close to 1030 um, and we said an hour. Is there anything else? Okay, no worries. Take care of yourself. Um, to care of yourselves. I know it's late in our time zone. So I will just go ahead and share the, um, the lesson plans are included. That's an important question. It's all included. Um, so you might have a certain amount of lesson plans for, per license. So like that RAS kids had 800 plus and that's just for the kids. The reading A to Z has teacher lesson plans. RAS plus, RAS plus is the one that has the kid accounts and also the teacher books and lessons scripted. So RAS Plus in my mind is essential because I need the books and lesson plans. I also need the student accounts and the app. The app allows me to create the flipped classroom for my students and the teacher resources allows me to really alleviate the planning burden and they work together so I can, in my account, pick the book, pick the lesson, send it in the app. In the app, I'll give them verbal feedback and then in my teacher dashboard, I have all my students and I see if they're logging in and I just keep everything organized and I can log out of RAS and it hasn't taken over my whole computer because it's all on the website. So I don't have a million files on my desktop with all the lessons that I'm doing. It's very nice. After I'm done teaching, I just log out of learning A to Z and uh, I don't have a messy desk or a messy desktop. It's all, it's all there. And my students can practice outside of class and get that value from me without me having to always be there for them to be learning. So they can keep learning even during the national holiday when we're not having classes. They can go into the library, they can listen to my feedback. It's, it's, I can't, I can't, I can't like praise this program enough for how much time it saved me and how much value it's provided to students. So Thank you so much, Gilbert, for letting me collaborate with you on this. And thank you for sharing this um, with us. My pleasure. Thank you. I am recording this, so I'm going to end the recording now, um, just because I know it's so 